Welcome back guys. Today we are going to be building the rift. Build part two, I think. I don't remember. This one we'll start this as build part one. And we're probably gonna try to get through the axles today. But this is the uh, cage after we've dyed it, in case you missed the uh, dyeing video. We've already got this done. Um, this is Rip Tangerine. And it looks like gold. And it looks like gold. And scarlet red on the back. And basically, I put it in the pot like this. Had a pot about this big around and yay tall. And filled it up with the orange dye. It's about two gallons of water to one bottle of Rit dye to get this color. Um, this cage is gray, so the tangerine kind of came out a little darker, which gave it this gold kind of hue, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so if you want your rift to be gold, use the Rit more tangerine. No, just orange. not the dye more, just the regular Rit tangerine. But the, uh, I basically did the front like this, and then flipped it over like this, and did the back in the, in the scarlet red. And that gave us this nice cool fade. I kind of worked it up and down as I was, you know, putting it in there to kind of blend the colors together. And it worked out pretty good. But we'll get to that later. Like what, when they say it's like scarlet red <coughs> and like tangerine orange or something like that, it doesn't really turn out, I feel like, that good. Like well, if the cage had been white, it probably would have. But that being a like of a light gray color, it kind of darkened things up a little bit. Yeah, so if you get a gray thing, like a gray um, cage, you might have different colors than what you expect. Yeah. Because our, our red turned to be maroon instead of purple. Yeah, red. like a dark maroon. Okay, so let's get started on this. The first one we're going to be doing, we're going to be building a differential. And we're just going to use this in the front. In the rear, we're going to use the spool. And in the center drive, the center uh differential we're going to use a spool so there's I think I believe there's two spools in this kit but we'll put one in the center and one in the rear so basically skip to step four if assembling using the included optional spool okay so we come over here to A4 all right so we'll get the A bag there get the scissors metal gears. Okay. So now we need these. And we're going to need these. I hate staples. They end up in the carpet. Alright, and we're going to need these. Listen to them. It's like when you drop quarters. Yeah, yeah, that's how you can tell when they're really hardened well. Yeah. You get so the th th to them. Those won't really break the, if they're at, like you're driving a car. It, like it'll really be hard to break them. You can break anything though. But they ought to hold up pretty good. I don't know what are those we're going to need. I can get all this stuff opened up while we're here. Um, where are you going? Upper O rings. He's like, I don't want to be put into this car. <laughs> I'm out of here. Okay. We're going to need this for at least one of them. There's our diff fluid. And it's all over the bag. Uh-oh. That's nice. Okay. I never delivered this. It's not really doing a good job. 
Axial needs to rethink their packaging for that stuff. Yeah. Is that is that like stuff like glue pretty much? No, it's it's diff lube. It's like a really thick oil. Oh. Now now it's just like a little zip log bag you have to put a teeth in. <laughs> well, one thing we can just cut the corner off, and then we can just squeeze it out in there. Oh yeah. So it'll kind of actually help a little bit, probably. Look at so that, that's the bright side of that. Yeah, gotta look on the plus side of things. <laughs> There's so many bags. So many bags. I would, I would keep those little baggies. I don't know why, but I would. Yeah, we don't need them. I got a bunch of Ziploc bags for storing all the RC parts. I just don't have a Ziploc, so they won't seal up. So I just throw them away. Okay, there's all the parts. All right, so let's start with the center diff. And this is the center. So we're going to put the spool in this one. And I'll put it together. Make sure you line it up with those. Those notches, yeah. Really tight. Okay. Yeah. Now you need a gasket. I want to check something. So they're symmetrical. Okay. All right. So there's the gasket. Now you need the gear. And line the holes up with the gear. I'm going to put a couple screws in first. And put a couple screws in and set it on there. Oops. Screws aren't going to cooperate. Let's see if we can get the screws lined up. There's one. Okay. You want to put them in? Okay. Remember to turn them clockwise, just like a clock goes. Okay. Center spool's done. Now the fun one. Now we got to go back to here, okay? So you need that. We got two different shims here. We got. Wait a minute. Oh, that's an O-ring. Oh, see, that's an O-ring. Duh. Okay. All right. So you got an O-ring, and then a shim, and then a bevel gear. You want to put those in? <laughs> right order. Which one goes in first? The O-ring. Yes. See that? Not see that counter sunk area down there where it's sunk in. Yeah. You got to push that down in there. Or you could just put the put it on the gear backwards. If you want to go this way. Make it easy. Oh. <laughs> Just press it on the gear here. Yeah. Might be easier. And then it all goes down in there. Oh. Make sure it sticks all the way in there. Yep, you got it. Okay, now the fun part. This is if you're putting the, this is the center diff, and that's if you're going to be using the gears in that, but we're not. So we're going to step right onto this one. So do the same thing with that one. 
Oh, that goes on last. See, the washer goes on here first. Oh, yeah. And then we get to put the spider gears in. Spider. Spitter gears. Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> and these are fun. Is that all in there? Okay. Good job. Now, before we go too much further, we'll tear into this mess. Go ahead and grab a paper towel here. This is going to be messy. But you said you were going to cut the corner off. I am, but first I need to get this to, this jug out of here. Oh. I'm just half tempted to throw this away and just use some of the other diff lube that we got. Which is right there. Let's have it open just in case. Oh. What a mess. You could get a Q tip though. No. Okay. So now we'll cut this excess off here. Try not to cut the bag. Yeah, I'm just going to cut the tip. Move the oil out of there. All right, well, we're going to put some of this in there first because we're going to put these, see, we've got to lay these spider gears down on top of that. Yeah. And we want the, we want this all the way filled up. So we want to put some of this in there first. Well, it actually works. Yeah, it works pretty good like that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. They should just put it in a bag. Look at how thick that is. Okay. It's slippery too. Don't fall on a banana. Don't fall <laughs> on the banana. Tell your finger that. Okay. Now, to get this mess. I could just imagine you putting something in there and it's all the way just popping right up. Like, there you go. it's gonna like leak out. Well, we'll have to come back to that to fill this up the rest of the way. Okay. All right. So now we gotta put the spider gears together. Get a shaft. Yep. One of those shafts and two of these gears. And you see the gears gotta face the inside? Yeah. So the gears gotta go on the shaft like that. Just like that. So the bevel part goes to the inside of the shaft. Oh, the shaft. I got that. <laughs> so you got two for it. Just need, you know, one for right now. We'll, we'll use two of both eventually. Wait a minute. Did you get that? Did you get that on that gear? Did you put that on this gear? Yeah. Are you sure? You didn't put it on one of them. I remember. One of them doesn't have it. That's got it. Okay. That one's got it. And that one's got it. Hmm. 
Okay. How did we end up with an extra one? Maybe they just decided to give us one. This stuff. Okay. So put your gears on there. Ready? Yep. To be faithful inside. Okay. Now you got to slide that in there with the flat facing up. You see the flat that's ground in that shaft in the middle? Yeah. That's got to be facing up when you drop that. Drop that in those two notches. Push the gears in so you get the. And push the gears in like so. Hold it. Does that have a burr on it? the heck? That one definitely does not spin on the shaft. Okay. So... Hand me this right here. Okay. Or it's the shaft. The shaft's got a defect in the chrome right there. See it? Mm. We don't need all the shafts, so we'll just pick a different one. Okay. There we go. So now, you just want to look to flat. And put that flat so it's facing up when you drop that in there. Okay. We'll make sure that gear goes on the other side of the double gear just like that okay. you're gonna need a paper towel too <laughs> this stuff's slimy <laughs> it's going everywhere oh my god i should have just used our normal dip wood and not mess with that but oh well we've already started now Okay, so now you do the same thing, but this time the notch goes down, so it mates into that one. You see that? Yep. See how they go together? Yeah. And then what that does is it creates an X, but the shafts are, are perfectly in line with each other. So they're not, not like this. They're more centered with each other. Okay. So make sure the notch is facing down. You got it. You got it. There we go. Once you press it all the way down, there you go. There it is. Now more diff wood. More mess. I should have put an extra camera here and just like trying to like make a little satisfying clip of it coming out. <laughs> you watch too much YouTube. Try not to get any more on my hands. I already feel like I've been playing with a big ball of slime. Get rid of that. 
don't mess with that no more. Okay, in there, there's a little blue stick. Or wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'll just do this. I should have used my cutters. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off. So I'm not getting this slime all over me. I hope there's still enough here to finish these off. Of course, that's a million weight up there too, I believe. Actually, that's there's some stuff up there that Gray Wolf sent me. We could try it out in it. Oh God. Trust me, if you have diff fluid on hand, million weight, or whatever you want to use in these, just throw this stuff away. Oh, it's so slimy and slippery. And I, I hope you guys have good luck when, with your packaging and stuff. Yeah. So it doesn't get all over where. Uh, it's like lava. It's like, like mozzarella you, cheese, but. Or it, it's actually it's like lava because like when you stretch out lava or something like that. It was like, it's like liquid glass. Oh, yeah. Like we went, yeah, we went and seen somebody the glass blowers. Okay, we got to put this one together. My hands are so slimy. Is that one messed up too? Is it? Nope, that one spins freely. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay, facing up. Now bring in. I'm facing down. Can't get this. It keeps coming to the side. Okay. Well, just drop it in with them in the middle. And just position it once you get it in there. There you go. Good job. Well, I feel like I just took something away. <laughs> I, it was like over here on my hand. <laughs> Uh, well, that's a lot. Let's get this. Well, you want them to be full. You should really watch um videos but these people are let like forge stuff with lava they sometimes even like stretch it out with um like they stretch the lava so that's why i said it looks like um those that really stretchy lava when you pour it up mm -hmm. okay my god we're tearing up some trees today I'm just gonna set these here. You're gonna have one paper towel left at this at the end of the video. Yeah. All right. We're gonna take a little break here, and we're gonna let that settle a little bit and let that soak in there. 
All right, now that these have settled in, put one little bubble. There we go. Now it's time to put our gaskets on. And one thing nice about this grease here, it should hold these gaskets in place a little better. Maybe. Okay, there's our three diffs done. Now we are on to Wait a minute, I wanted to see something. Okay, yeah. The actual housings. This is bag B1. So let's get this bag opened up. Look at this. More bags inside bags. It's like those Russian dolls. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. You take the top one off, and then there's another one inside that's smaller, and then you take that one off, and there's another one inside that's smaller. Well, look, we got a bag, and inside this bag is more bags. And inside these bags is more little bags. You should have really just, like, tried to cut it while you were cutting it. <laughs> Both at the same time. Yeah. Save some time. Oh, look. More grease. This goes in here. If we even need it. You already got another messy grease bottle and not another one. Well look. More bags inside those bags. <laughs> Get a time lapse this. <laughs> <laughs> the bag opening. You should really put that on the screen. I like this axial fit mat. It's textured so stuff doesn't roll around. Oh look, a little bag inside that bag and then a little bag inside that bag. <laughs> They could have just dumped all this in one bag and said, there, there's all your parts for the front axle. I mean, it's easy enough to figure out with the pictures. Okay, let's take this stuff. stuff we don't need and this one's bad those, those the axles front axles yeah. so the front wheel can turn and these have these little spacers in here for when they made them See them? Mm -hmm. Must have been so they wouldn't, the, the mold wouldn't, the plastic part wouldn't collapse when it cooled off or something. I don't know why they would put those in there other than that, but that's the only thing that seems to make sense to me. Differential cover. Another bag inside that bag. I guess it keeps all the metal parts from banging into each other while it's being shipped over from China. Because everything comes from China. Yeah. Put it over there with the diff covers and bearings. Oh, you know what? Um, Metal shielded bearings. I should have ordered a bearing set for this. There's actually two wa reasons why it takes so long for um, China to deliver stuff. What? So, of course, it's across the world. But people who live close to it 
like close to China, that's like in Russia or something, it still takes a long time because um they're getting slowed down because of the coronavirus. Because mm. that's that's where it originated from. Got these little pieces. Mold flashing is still stuck in there. So that's going to need. Don't put your finger off. Didn't know what happened. Just gotta be careful. Never cut toward your shell. That's what you're doing. <laughs> Teaching you bad habits. Do not try this at home, kids. There we go. And another bag inside a bag. I think that was 6,700 bags. I lost count at 6,500. There we go. Oh, wait, one more bag. <laughs> we gotta put the oil in the bag because we want the bag to get covered with oil when it leaks. This is like thread lock, which you've already got a big bottle. If you're gonna use thread lock, use 242 or 243. Don't use the red. That's a permanent bond. I've seen people using the red all the time, complaining they can't get the screws out of their cars, their RC cars, and that's usually why. Okay, ready to put the axle together? This is fun part. Fun part. Look how cool that is. All right. So first we need a bearing and a bearing. And this was in that first set. So we got this bearing and this bearing. And we need, oh wait, never mind. I'm grabbing them from the wrong spot. This bearing and this bearing. Okay, they all came in the same bag. So you wanna put that in? You wanna put it in? So the big bearing goes on that shaft. It goes all the way back to there. You put it on straight. If you don't crook it, it won't go because it's a real snug fit. There you go. Now that goes in there. There? Oh. Down in there. It sticks out the front side. That's what your drive shaft connects to that drives the, the axles. Mm. And it's going to be a snug fit too, probably. No, not for me. Yeah, um. it sure is. It's like it's crooked. It sure is. It's better it's snug than loose. Mm. There we go. Now it's in it. Now you can put that one on. This one will be snug as well. When you're pressing on a bearing, don't press on the inner race, press on the outer race. It's out here. Because this is where it's locating in the part. So you're trying to press this down into the And you don't want to you don't want to press um, the inner area because the fall like pop out. There's nothing behind it. And that could probably stand to go on there just a little bit farther. What's this here? Does that fit on there? No. What was I thinking? That will fit on there. This should be good. Okay. That's done. Uh oh. Now we get to put a diff in there. And this is the front axle and rear axle. These two here. So you see how it goes in? 
Mm. You got the two bearings there. The two big bearings. Wait. Is it those bearings or these bearings? These bearings. Yeah, the bigger ones. So you got two of those. One on each side of that. One goes on the other side of it. Put it on straight now. If you get it crooked, it won't go. There you go. And make sure it goes in here the right way. And then they fall right back off. <laughs> They're hard to put on, but then they fall right back off. So put it in the right way. Like um, this? Nope. Nope. Look at the picture. Oh. Oh. The other way. There you go. <laughs> now those bearings sure? gotta slide. Those bearings gotta slide into that channel. Right there, just like what that. What channel? Channel fifty-seven or what? You get yeah. it. You see those pockets right there? That pocket and that pocket. The curved. Yeah. yeah. They sit right down there. It's a cradle. Oh. Yep. Hard to put them on. They fall right back off. Always. So you just, gotta, you just gotta get those bearings to slide right in there. I tried to make a joke. Channel 69, <laughs> 72, 44. And then look. 97. See? Yeah. Just a little bit of play, it's like it's sounds, supposed to be. It sounds like um, you're clicking something. That's those two gears. That's this gear. And, well, this won't be the same, but it's the, the gears. Slop mm -hmm. in between the gears it's called gear mesh, and that'll that'll tighten up. Actually, it just did. Now there's just a, ever so slightly a little bit there. So next, it's the differential cover. Yep, but we got to put Ooh. some grease on here. Might as well go ahead and use some of this dip grease. Since we got it, oh, nice! Oh, Look, no. they wrapped a piece of tape around it. Guess what tape doesn't stick to? What grease? Eh. They just wrapped a piece of tape around there for no apparent reason. <laughs> it didn't help. It's still everywhere. They should have just used Gorilla Tape. <laughs> gorilla Tape. Or Gorilla Glue. <laughs> they should have just done like I said and just filled the bag up with grease and then you could just <laughs> cut the corner off and squeezed it out. Yeah. Would have been a lot better than they sticking actually, in these silly actually, cups. Um, RC Car Company, that would be a better... Um, and cheaper. Yeah, better and cheaper um, solution with grease. Yeah, I don't want to make a pad to sit so, this greasy stuff on. If, if RC car Company does not watch um, YouTube and these videos, if someone knows a manager to one of the companies, how about <laughs> how about you just message them and send this um, send the this video to them? I kind of doubt they'll listen. <laughs> okay, so now. If 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 it if they did listen, um, then we'll probably have a lot of subscribers in probably about a month. <laughs> <laughs> so just gotta put some lube around these gears. We got a spoon over there somewhere that's small that's made for this kind of stuff, but I don't feel like hitting it. I'm going to get it. Plenty of grease here, so I think they set at um, this bottle because they knew the other bottle just decided to, yeah. I'm just gonna put a glob of it in there just to be safe. What'll happen is, since that differential shape is shaped like that, the grease will kind of drop down to the bottom here. So when you get done running your RC car, it'll all goop back down to the bottom 
and regrease your gear for you. Yeah. Okay. Big tip. Big tip. We should name our channel. Look at that. Doesn't it look cool? It looks like a real truck. Literal truck axle, I mean. <laughs> okay. I, I, I was like, wait, what? And then we got... Uh, M3 by 16. That's about 16 mil. No. It's these. That's what you get for dumping all the packages out at once. What? I just don't know which one switch screws you're supposed to be using. Well, Those are button heads and these are socket heads. Anyway, I didn't even look. See, it's a socket head there. And they still managed to grab a socket head or button head. i make sure. See, sir. Yep, they're all the same size. Okay. All right. I'm supposed to use Loctite on these. What? Oops. Because it's metal going into metal. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and put some Loctite on here. It's kind of spelt weird. To it's it's like it's supposed to be like L O C K, mm -hmm. but it's L O C T I T E. Yeah, it's supposed to be T I G H T. What? Yeah. Tight is spelled T I T T I G H T. Oh yeah. I sometimes hate it when people like. Yeah. Do something like that. Because I could, I could. People do that with logos all the time. Yeah. Get a drop. Get a drop. Get a drop. Get a little drop. And look, look how much they give you. <laughs> There's like maybe 10 drops of <laughs> thread lock in there. Well, which you don't need any more than that really, but I thought that was kind of funny when I built the uh, Turbo Scorpion, the thread lock bottle. And I just use tiny little drops of thread lock. I don't put much on there at all. And uh, the bottle only had like at most 10 drops in it and there's I think there was at least 15 parts on there that you needed to put thread lock on. I ran out before I even got three fourths of the way through that build. One day I'm going to do a video of how many drops it takes to empty that bottle. That little tiny bottle. <laughs> you going to buy another rip kit just to test the bottle? No, I'm going I'm to ask the company if I could borrow, borrow one of those <laughs> thread lock things for a video. And then I'll, I'll record it and see uh, how many drops it takes? Mm -hmm. Kids and their imagination. And I'm not, I'm not torquing these down a lot because it does have thread lock on there. But that yeah, that'll be good. Little much. 
So you take this plastic down and things start to shrink up a little bit. It starts to compress everything and then you end up with your gear meshes going out of whack. There we go. Okay. So there's that part. Got all the screws in. Now we gotta put the carriers on the outside. And these, let me see what that says. Those are, uh, you see on the right or an L on there anywhere? Check the sides. There it is. There it is. Yes. So this is the left side. So this is the front axle. So you're looking at the car from the back, the left side's over here. So this one goes on this side. Well, that says right. Oh, we're looking at the axle backwards. So this one goes on this side. And we gotta have a bearing in there first. Duh. Duh. Don't put it crooked. I don't put it in crooked. Which I'm doing. Good luck getting them out if you ever have to change them because you have to come this is a solid axle so you have to come in with something long all the way through there and hope you can get a bite on that inner race to knock it out of there and they are in there good I hope that's in there far enough Okay, so this is the left hand side, and this is the right hand side. And these are caster blocks, camber blocks, I guess. Camber see how they, blocks. See how they tilt the. Oh, yeah. That's tilted that way. Axle carriers is what they're called. Okay, so now we got the two of these. And these are the bearings. No. Oh. Six by twelve bearing. Okay. So these are the bearings that were actually supposed to go in there, but they're the same size. Fortunately. Okay, you want to put this together? Mm. You want to put those through there? So, and the other two here. Do it this way.
He's going through the hole real snug. get a lock net on the bottom. Hmm. Which actually there's a pocket there that holds the net so gotta run those back out just a little bit to get the net in there. See the brown side of the net and the, and the flat side? Yeah. So the flat side goes in. Yeah. The flat side goes in? Yep. The flat side goes down. Yeah. Those little hexagon pockets. Wait a minute. They don't even fit in there. Really? What's up with that? There they go. It's just a snug fit. They got one. There's the other one. It's going to be another one of those things where they're hard to get in there. Then once you get them in and you flip the thing over, they're all going to fall right back out. so tiny so it's so hard yeah they could have made these pockets just a little bit bigger there's no reason for them to be snug thank you you got yours in mm -hmm. and your little fingers <laughs> ah there we go all right, all right i'm gonna put these in so i don't starting to look like an axle. So now we're on to putting the actual axles in. This is the actual housing. Okay, fun part. We got the small bearings and the big bearings. You wanna put this in? Figure it out? You want this first. You gotta put the 30, the 230, which is the bigger bearing. So the bigger bearing goes on the outside of that, just like that. All right, and then it goes through, this is, okay, so if this is the front, that's going to be the left-hand side of the truck, because see the shorter axle goes here? Yeah. And then the longer one goes from here to here, that's this one. So this is the front of the truck, so this is the left-hand side, so we need this that says L on it somewhere. That's an R. So we need this one. All right. So you see how that goes together? Mm -hmm. See this? Yep. You already got this on there. The bearing's already on there. you got to put the axle through here. Oh. So it goes through the back side just like that. Then I need... Did you 
the bearing go in? Does the bearing go in? No, yeah, good job. And then the smaller bearing goes on the outside. Looks like it's crooked. Does it look like it's crooked? Yeah, it was a little crooked. Go ahead. That one's going to be a snug one. Really? Yep. There we go. Okay. And then that goes. You see how that goes? Just like that. Boom. Okay. So now we get a pin and a pin and a little screw and a little screw. We put them in there. The pin goes on in the inside hole the hole that way so there's two holes there this is these are the king pins hmm. and that's probably going to be snug yeah let me push it in Oh goodness. Oh boy. What is up with that? Do we have that on upside down? Yes. Yeah. Or no? It says the left, but it says L right there. That's my right side. This is the front of the truck here. Oh. So that's the left side, the hand side of the truck. Maybe those bearings are, that might have been out. There it went. Just wasn't holding my mouth right. I need a little vice up here. There. It just fell right in once I got it lined up right. Okay. So now we put the little screw in that holds them in. And there's the left side gun. Now the right side. 
This goes on here like so. You want to do this one? Mm, you can do it. You can I can do turns. it. My turn? Yeah. And putting those bearings in, I've seen people that try to push the bearing in like that. And it's actually, if you got a shaft like this, it's easier to put it on the shaft and get it to go in mm -hmm. a lot of times. Just like that. Okay, and this one's going to go just like so. Oh, gotta spin the axle to get it lined up with the diff. There we go. Okay. Now remember, this should fall right in. There we go. Find the right orientation. There it is. Last thing we gotta do is put the link mounts on. There's two right there. Do, 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 do. Got that done. Got that done. We went ahead and did that. Or no. It doesn't even show you putting the other side on. Mm. It just shows you one. They only go one way though. Okay. So now it's time for the link mounts. And again, this is the left side, this is the right side. You see an L or an R? There's an R. Okay, so this is the right side. And you gotta make sure that the orientation is right. So this goes up. faces this way right what am I doing wrong it goes like that that's where your shock absorber mounts yeah. and this gets these four screws here almost done almost done, almost done. Those are button heads. No, oh, we need the. What do we do with the steering wings? Those, those two. Did you put them back in the box? <laughs> oh, there they are. That's all I got in there. No way. It's 
this one. I'm tired of all this wrench turning. Okay, weight bars. And I already assembled these ahead of time, along with all the other links, because I know nobody wants to watch somebody putting links together. What is that extra ball for? Well, it goes in between there. Okay, so this ball, 6.8 by 7.6, so, and that is the 29, and the 29 is over here, so that means this link rod goes on here this way. It's right down here somewhere. Got it. You hurt your back? <laughs> you okay? Yeah. So this slides in between here. You see where it goes? Right there. Yeah. It slides in between these two. It's just a spacer. I don't know why they didn't just provide an aluminum spacer there. But. I was about to say, why is that? Why is that bent? Did it get bent when they were delivering it? Nope. It bent it like that. It's got to clear this. Oh. So that sits in here, like so. And this one sits in here. Nope. Uh-oh. Yeah, we'll cut that. Let me bring this over here so I can see what I'm doing. Is it pain in the butt? There we go. The screw going through there before it falls out again. Put this one in here. Finally. See, that connects to the servo that's what steers your wheels. Hmm. Can you see why that hump's in there? Because yeah. if it was straight, it would hit this. It's like two inches away from it. Mm -hmm. It's about a sixteenth of an inch away from it. It'll get closer when it steers all the way. See? It just hits it. Yeah, it won't hit it. There's, there it's turned all the way and it's still got about a sixteenth of an inch clearance. Okay. So we're on page 14 and we're just now getting the axle, the front axle put together. Yeah. 
That's pretty good. That's a good sign. Because that, that means it won't take a while. <laughs> it's a lot of pages. The transmission is going to take a bit too. Okay. We're going to take a break right there and, and we'll come back with the rear axle done. Don't need to see the exact same steps on it. I mean, the only difference is, is these blocks and, of course, the carriers here. But everything else is exactly the same. It's just putting a diff in and the cover on and putting the axles in mm. and the bearings in the end. But it's beefy. I'm used to 16th scale axles, which are only about this big. That's more like a 8th inch scale axle. Yeah, this is going to be the first 14 car we ever had that we built. No, we got more of them that are built that work. Look at me. It runs. It's all done. You just need the body put on it. Oh, I thought it was like the steering though. Oh, yeah, the steering's crap on it, but it works. You can drive it. We need more, like, uh, a better servo or something. Yeah. No, it's just the. That, yeah, racing steering rack that's on there is crap. Mm -hmm. So we will get that replaced, and then we'll get the body um, done. Just got fed up with that car. Just fed up with it. It's not all it's cracked up to be. For some reason, we got two extra screws. Look at the pile of parts we're building up over there. Just all kinds of parts. Yeah. And we don't have the, we got a ticking servo, ticking or ticking or however you say it. Um, ticking. Ticking, tacking. Ticking, tackle. <laughs> we got a ticking servo coming in, the high torque one, the one that's 599 inch pounds plus or 500 inch pounds plus, whatever it is. But FedEx has decided to carry it all the way around the country a couple times from California. It went from California to Arizona to Texas. Oklahoma, back to Oregon, and now it's sitting in Utah. So, Wait, so, so here's the United States. It came from here, went here, went here, and then went <laughs> all the way up here, and then it's coming back the same path. It come back to the same spot right there, and now it's gonna come all the way across to Indiana. <laughs> that what? Like, why would you need to go like that way when you're and then back that way? Yeah, I don't have a clue. It's that, FedEx that's, for that's you. Like, that's like um, when you forget something at home and you need to go somewhere else to get it. <laughs> it's like, it's like, um. Well, see, that one time I ordered, uh, what was it? Came from, it was either, I think it was from A Main. It was something from one of the other bills we was doing that I needed it by that weekend and it didn't show up till the middle of next week. FedEx took it from California. Oh, no, that was your TTO2s. Oh, yeah. That was a TTO twos. I bought them from that guy in California. They went from California. They went. They went first. They went twelve different places in California. <laughs> there was twelve stops in California. I've never seen that before ever, and it was just a short distance. And then they went to Arizona, New Mexico, um, and then they went up north, northern Oklahoma. Then they went to Missouri. Then they went to Chicago. They went to St. Louis, Missouri. They went to Chicago and then went back to St. Louis, Missouri, and then shot past us and went to uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and then came back to Indianapolis and then back here to Terre Haute. So they print at, at Arizona, did the, it did this. Yeah, in California, it did all kinds of stuff. It was it was bouncing around, working its way down towards Arizona. It's, a, it's like this. It's like this. Yeah. Like that. And then, and then, and they were going like that, and then, yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll be back with the, um, I guess we're going to do the rear off camera. Since this video got pretty long. There's the rear housing. Do, 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 do. Not much to it. And then it's putting the links together, which I've already got the links done. Except for the rears. We'll put the rears together on camera, at least one of them. And then we get to go to the fun stuff. What's that? The engine. Nope. With the um, steering track? Nope. Nope. It's got all the gears in it. Uh, transmission? Transmission.
I was about to say it. And I, <laughs> I shut you down, didn't I? <laughs> All right, we'll be back, guys. Thanks for watching.